As we headed into 2020, I had a chance to talk with the chief futurist of Ford Motor Company, Cheryl Connolly. I so enjoyed the conversation. I was delighted to see Ford releasing a new outlook on what we expect in society as we move into 2021. Hopefully with the pandemic, a decreasing threat eventually. And I recently talked about it with Cheryl over a Zoom conversation that went like this. Cheryl, it's been a while since I talked to you, but I have to admit, I believe the last time we spoke, I don't believe as a futurist, you told me there was a pandemic coming. What, what happened to your crystal ball? <laughs> <laughs> well, truth be told, actually in 2004, a team of people at Ford, including myself, did some future scenarios. And we did talk about an economic collapse brought on by yeah. a global pandemic. Now, of course, COVID planned out played out a lot differently than we expected. Um, and that's why we have the 2021 trend report, because there's so much to unpack here about the last year. In fact, a lot of uh, one of the, the headlines, I think, of your report would have to be about the anxiety that people are feeling all over the world. I think it was 63% are, are much more worried about their lives than they were a year ago. Uh, uh, this stress load on all of us is enormous. It is really remarkable. 67% of the people that we spoke to, and that's in 14 different countries, said that watching the daily news was stressful. And what's noteworthy about that is that's a 17 percentage increase from when we asked the question last just three years ago. How does that end up, what does that end up meaning in, in the way that we conduct our lives? Well, you know, overall, when we look across all ages worldwide, People have been surprisingly resilient, but there are some areas to worry about. And I know you're a parent, I'm a parent. It's the youngest generation that seems to be struggling the most. And I'm really talking about from our survey standpoint, those people are 18 to 23 years of age. 63% of them said that it was harder to adjust to the pandemic than they had imagined. No, it's quite the reverse for baby boomers. 53% say it was easier to adjust. And perhaps it comes down to loneliness because Generation Z is twice as likely to report daily loneliness or weekly loneliness um, than baby boomers. So 64% of Gen Z say that they're lonely on a regular basis and only 34 for baby boomers. Nevertheless, that is still a year over year increase for all generations. And I think the youngest people are, are seeing a change because they're moving closer to or moving in with their family at 50% rate. So it's an interesting time. It's an interesting time for all ages. In fact, I think the last time you and I spoke, which was before the pandemic, um, it, we were talking then about this mass epidemic of loneliness in the world. Um, this is only exacerbating that then, right? Yes, it was really interesting, too, because as your memory is correct, we did spend a lot of time talking about loneliness. And we know that year over year, the numbers have increased across the board. And while it's still the highest for Generation Z, the biggest increase um, happened at the baby boomer level. So there's, there's angst to go around, if you will. But we also know that people are responding by trying to be more mindful about their mental well-being. 80% of the people we surveyed said that they're trying to do a better job in that space. And so they're turning to meditation or mindfulness apps. In fact, Lincoln offers a partnership with Calm, and they have a pre free premium membership for Lincoln owners so they can find ways to cope. The other part of this, then, is that part of coping, so many people are looking for the word that you used in your report was an escape of some kind. People are ready to kind of break free of the chains uh, that have been uh, holding us back. We can sort of look ahead now and maybe see light at the end of the tunnel. We know a vaccine is coming. What does that mean, then, as uh, not just Ford, but every company in the world now tries to figure out our behavior moving forward, because I think a lot of the habits that we've developed over the last nine to 10 months are going to stay in place for quite a while. Particularly on the work front, right? I know you still have to go into work on a daily basis, but many of my colleagues at Ford and myself, we're working remotely because we're not necessarily place dependent. And while I feel like work is harder in many ways and I work longer hours, I ironically feel less rushed. Um, the majority of people we spoke to around the world agree with that. And I feel like time has kind of slowed down, which is odd. It's based kind of on this notion, I feel like I have more time to get stuff done. Uh, 
there's work that's changed. The other area that we know that they, that's changing is um, how we buy. Retail experience has changed dramatically with a good number of people saying they don't want to go back to the old ways of retail. It's interesting, then, as you're trying to sell cars to the world, um, people aren't traveling they, uh, on vacations the way that we were. People aren't even driving to work every day as commuters. And yet we see this enormous craze right now over some new vehicles, including the Bronco. Uh, I've talked a lot about uh, about waiting for the, uh, the electric Mustang to come along. What does that tell us about? <laughs> I mean, we, we seem a little confused, don't we? Well, I think what's happened is that our relationship with automobiles have changed. In fact, three quarters of the people we spoke to said they couldn't even imagine life without their own personal vehicle. And maybe we're not driving or commuting to work on a regular basis, but we are doing different things with our vehicle. So for instance, one in five say that they turn to their automobile for privacy. One in four use it as a place to relax. One in three say they go to their vehicle just to decompress or be alone. And my favorite stat is that 7% say that they use their automobile as a place to hide. So never has the Ford Escape been more appropriately named. <laughs> exactly. And then to your point, though, the portfolio, there's good reason to be excited. You've got the electric F-150, the Bronco. I know your family's waiting on theirs to be produced. My family's counting down the days. I think we'll be waiting a little bit. But it's exciting to see all the energy. And specifically, the Mach-E, the all-electric Mustang Mach-E is going to be really helpful in the sustainability front, which the world needs because COVID, the one of the surprising things about COVID is it's been detrimental to the environment. I mean, indeed, we saw cleaner air in the early days, brighter skies, but sustaining sustainability throughout the pandemic has been very difficult, particularly as people are relying more on disposable goods and plastics. Cheryl, I've always told, I've told you before, I think you have one of the most fascinating jobs uh, on the planet. I really uh, always enjoy talking to you. Thanks so much for the time. It's been great. Thank you. Take care. Happy holidays. We will link to the new Ford report, by the way, on our website at clickondetroit.com slash flashpoint. Back with more in just a minute.